Okay, so we're up to one of the last parts of calculus for this year, which is using calculus to actually solve questions, solve problems. So in business, mainly, um, we are trying to always uh, look for maximums or minimums, like for instance, maximum profits or minimum costs. Okay, so in these questions, you'll be either asked to maximize or minimize. Okay, you won't be asked to do both, but you'll be asked for max or min. Okay. So maximizing or minimizing something, okay, as we've been looking at graphing, if you want a maximum something or you want a minimum something, it always occurs at a turning point, okay. Um, and unfortunately, you can never see every single type of question that there is, but there's always a series of steps to follow. So we'll be looking at some examples, but I can't show you every single question that you could ever uh, be asked. Okay, copy and come across. Okay, so here are the steps. Okay, look at what you're trying to maximize and minimize. It's usually at the end of the question. Okay, look for the end, at the end of the question, the question will say maximize or minimize something. So look at the end and that will tell you what you're trying to find. Okay, number two is the hard one. Okay, you either got the equation given to you or more often you have to write an equation for what you're trying to maximize. So the quantity is, you know, the cost or the profit or whatever. Okay, but this is the hard part. And the other part is you can only have one variable, one letter, like X. You can't have two letters X and Y, although sometimes it looks like you have two letters, and that's what we'll be looking at in these examples. Okay, and then again, as you've been looking at, when we're trying to find a max or a min, we've got to find the first derivative, okay? You then make that, you make that first derivative equal to zero, and then you solve the equation, and then this is, number six is often forgotten. You have to test whether it's a max or a min. You have to show that that's the max or the min. And then the last part is the icing on the cake. You just have to answer the question. Okay, so write those steps down and we'll have a look at how it works out. Come across when you're ready. Okay, so we're looking at uh, a series of examples. First one, find two numbers whose product is 16 but whose sum is a minimum. So, change colours. Okay, so that's what we're trying to, to minimize. So we need to have the sum formula. Okay, so what we have to do is find um, a sum formula. So here's how you start. Okay, we're looking for two numbers. So what we say is, let the first number be x, and then the second number, at this stage, we can call it Y for the time being, but we can't have two letters. So we'll, we'll call it Y for the time being. And then we say the two numbers, X times Y, equals 16. Now, where do I get that from? It says the product is 16. So first number times the second number equals 16. So straight away, I know that the, the, the second number Y is the same as 16 over X. So now I have just one letter. Okay, so the sum is what we have to minimize or maximize. In this case, it's a minimize. The sum equals the first number plus the second number. So I have an equation, I have a formula for what we're trying to minimize and maximize, and I only have one letter. Okay, so uh, we can say at, we're trying to minimize. So at the minimum, the sum derivative equals zero. And the sum derivative equals the derivative of x is 1. Now, just remember here, that's the same as 16x to the minus 1. 16 over x equals 16x to the minus 1. So uh, we're going to multiply the power by the number and then subtract 1. All right, so that looks okay so far. Then we say 0 equals 1 minus. Now, this comes back to a normal fraction. Okay, so we've got 0 equals 1 minus 16 over x squared. Um, what we'll do is we'll move that across to the other side. So 16 over x squared equals 1. Now this is an equation with a fraction with something on the bottom. So we're going to cross multiply. So that comes across to there. So 1 times x squared is x squared. So x equals plus or minus the square root of 16, which is plus or minus 4. So, uh, if x equals positive 4, y equals 16 over 4, which is 4, 
if x equals minus 4, y equals minus 4. Okay, so we've got two answers, um, and we're trying to determine both answers are right. Because oh, uh, let's check, are both answers right? Okay, so we've got two numbers whose product is 16. Okay, so both of those answers. Both of these answers have products that are 16. So let's find second derivative. Okay, so y double dash. So going back to, well, it's not y double dash. Let's call it sum double dash. Okay, so we go back to this form. Okay, so 1 disappears. Minus 2 times minus 16 equals plus 32 x to the minus 3, which is 32 over x cubed. So at x equals 4, some double dash is a positive number, so that's the min. Okay? And we can leave it at that. So therefore, the two numbers are four and four okay um, if we've done x equals minus four x equals minus four uh, some double dash y double dash is going to be a negative number so that would be the max okay so copy that down and come across okay so we've formed an equation we've tested it and we've answered the question okay come across when you're ready Okay, so looking at the next one, a farmer has 100 metres of fence and wants to, and she wants to maximise the area of a paddock using the fencing. Now, we'll just make sure we'll call it a rectangular paddock, just to make sure you're not confused with a circular paddock or thing like that. So it's a rectangular paddock. What are the dimensions of the paddock, and what are the dimensions of the paddock, and what is the area? And we're trying to maximise the area, so I need to have an area formula. Okay, so what we've got is draw a diagram x, x, y, y. So there's my paddock. We don't know all the dimensions, so we say let the length be x, let the width be y. So I've got two letters which I'm not allowed to have. So I say 2x plus 2y equals the perimeter, 100 metres of fence. So x plus y equals 50 metres divided by 2. And so my second dimension, y, is the same as 50 minus x. So now I've got, my, I've got rid of my second letter. So the area, which is what we have to maximise, equals length times width. And the length is x and the width is 50 minus x and then multiply that out. Now straight away, that shape there is going to be a parabola and it's going to have a maximum value. So there's not going to be two choices. There's only going to be a maximum, but I've still got to go through the motions and prove it. Okay, so a dash equals 50 minus 2x. And so we say at the maximum area, a dash equals zero. So 50 minus 2x equals 0, 2x equals 50, x equals 25, okay? So that means that the length equals 25 metres. The width, go back to your formula, the width equals 50 minus 25, which is also 25. So what we've got is the rectangle is actually a square. Okay. So I found the dimensions and I checked to see if I've answered the question and the question says what are the dimensions and what is the area? So I've got to do that last part as well. And so the area equals 25 times 25 and that equals 625 metres squared. So don't forget units as well. Uh, make sure you answer the question. Um, we've 
haven't tested it that it's a maximum yet so that's what we have to do back here I forgot to do that so a double dash area double dash is the derivative of that which is minus 2 which is a negative number so I have a maximum area okay it's a negative number so it's a maximum area so I've answered the question I've tested it that it's a max and I've made sure I've answered the question okay copy that and come across when you're ready okay so this one I've got out of the textbook I've just cut it out um, so we've got a square piece of paper okay so it's a square piece of metal and then you're cutting squares out of each corner and then we're going to fold the sides up okay we're going to fold the sides up and make a box so from a square piece of metal squares are cut out okay so the squares are cut out on these corners here okay the metal is then folded along the dot edge to make a, uh, an open box with a height of x so this dimension here this way or this way is the x okay uh, now side length is 2 okay and I'm taking x out of each corner okay so x is coming out of each corner so that dimension there was 2 okay and that dimension there was 2 as well so I hope that you can picture what's happening you cut the corners out and then you fold up the sides okay so we're going to show that the volume is that and then maximize the volume so at the end of the day if you can't actually prove a that doesn't mean you can't do B because you've actually been given the formula so part B is still doable even if you can't show that the volume is right okay so if you look at the diagram that's the height of the box which is what's being cut out of each corner okay so the height is X and this dimension and this dimension will be 2 minus 2x because what's happening with the two meters is you're cutting X out of each side you're cutting X out of each side so you've got 2 minus 2x on the, the bottom and then you've got an X height okay so the volume equals the length times the width times the height is 2 minus 2x 2 minus 2x and x so what I want you to do is pause the tape here and I want you to expand that out and we know what the answer has to look like but I want you to just pause it and then see if you can do it out and come back live when you're ready okay so we're going to expand out so we've got 4 minus 4x I'm going to expand out these first two brackets minus 4x plus 4x squared and we still got to multiply by x at the end so I've got 4 minus 8x plus 4x squared times x so multiply through we've got 4x minus 8x squared plus 4x cubed and then if you look up there's my 4x cubed there's my minus 8x and there's my plus 4x so it doesn't matter what the order is so we can just reorder it but don't forget even if you couldn't get part A you can still try to do part B because um, you've got the formula given to okay so we have to maximize the volume and we've got the volume formula so volume dash is 12x squared minus 16x plus 4 and then take out the 4 because that's a common factor okay so then you've got a quadratic here okay which you have to factorize so again I'll, I'll use a cross multiply method you could use a quadratic formula 3x x it's a plus at the back and a minus in the middle so it has to be two minuses so I'll go minus one minus one so minus 3x minus 1x equals minus 4x which is what I wanted and x minus 1 so at max or the min v dash equals zero so therefore x will equal one third and one now if you have a look at the formula 
for the volume, we've got a cubic. And again, hopefully you've learned from curve sketching that cubics either look like that or they look like that. Okay. Now this is a positive cubic, which means it's going to be the second one. Okay. And the reason there's two answers is because there's two turning points. One's going to be the min and one's going to be the max. And we're trying to find the max. Okay. So it's not going to be this one, it's going to be this shape. But there are two answers. One's a max and one's a min. Okay. So let's go and do V double dash. V double dash is 24x minus 16. And so at x equals 1, I'll use the second number first. I've got V double dash equals 24 minus 16 equals 8. 8 is greater than 0. Okay. So that's going to be the minimum value. And at x equals one third, v double dash is eight minus sixteen, which is minus eight. It's not the eight that's important, it's the plus or minus. Minus eight is less than zero, so that's gonna be the max value. Okay, I haven't answered the question. Let's check what the question says. Okay. Show find the value of x, okay, that gives the value that find the value of x that gives the box its maximum value and show that the volume is a maximum okay so we've done it we actually have answered the question so therefore x equals one third of a meter for max volume so i found x and i also tested it that it was the max now the reason why this one's the minimum is because if you have a look at the original diagram okay two minus two x if x equals 1 that means I've got no base and I've got no I've got no base because I'm cutting two two meters out of each end, I'm cutting a meter out of each end and that's why it's got the minimum volume okay so that was a bit involved but that's what you have to do so copy that and when you're ready come across okay so we're looking at uh, the last one I think it's the last one um, last question we're gonna do so Ooh, I don't want that. So a cuboid is just a rectangular prism, not a cube. Like the answer might end up being a cube, but a cuboid is a rectangular prism. So it's got a surface area of 150 and a square base. So a square base means XX, and we don't know the heights. Um, because I looked ahead and it says show that the height is given by this. So um, we're going to have to show that, but then. Even if I couldn't do it, part A, I know that the volume is going to be length times width times height. So even if I couldn't do part A, I could still keep going because they've told me what the height has to look like. Okay. So even if you can't prove it, we could keep going on and do part B, but we're going to do part A as well. Okay. So in part A, the surface area has six faces okay now the face at the bottom is a square and so is the one on the top so that's going to be 2x squared and each of the other four faces is going to be length times width so it's 4xh okay so the six faces two of them are squares the top and the bottom and the other ones are rectangles and this is where the 150 comes in we put 150 out the front okay and then we've got to make H the subject because that's what it looks like H equals so I have 4xh equals 150 minus 2x squared okay so then H equals 150 minus 2x squared divided by 4x and you can see that there's 150 there's a 2 there's a 4 so we can divide everything by 2 so I get 75 minus x squared on 2x and that is what I was looking for. Okay. So even if I couldn't prove part A, I can do the rest of it anyway. But I was able to prove it, so let's keep going. So part B, express the volume in terms of X. So the volume is the length times the width times the height. So it's X squared times that, and that's pretty untidy because we can see that that X will knock over one of those X's. So end up with 75x minus x cubed over 2 okay so that x on the bottom 
knocks over one of the x's on the top but I've still got one x and then I multiply through. So then I've answered part b, express the volume in terms of x, hence determine its maximum volume. I've got the formula for volume so now I derive. Now don't worry about the 2 on the bottom, the derivative of 75x is 75 and the derivative of minus x cubed is minus 3x squared. And then we say at max, okay, v dash equals 0, okay. So therefore 0 equals 75 minus 3x squared over 2, okay. And then 2 times 0 is still 0, so that just disappears. So then I've got 3x squared equals 75, x squared equals 25, divide through, and so x equals plus or minus the square root of 25, which is plus or minus 5. Now, we can't have negative lengths, okay? So x equals minus 5 is ridiculous because you can't measure things with negatives, negative lengths. But let's use calculus to prove it. So v double dash... Okay, so going back to that, um, the 75 disappears. The 2 still alive. That's okay. We don't worry about that. And then we've got minus 6x. And then at x equals 5, v double dash is going to be a negative number. So it's a maximum volume. Okay. Um, let's see if we've answered the question, though. Okay. Hence, determine its maximum volume. Well, we haven't found the maximum volume, but we have found x. Okay, so the volume formula is this mess. So volume equals 75, no that's not, that's V dash, sorry, but a bit higher, volume is this formula, 75x minus x cubed on 2, 75x minus x cubed over 2, just make sure I've got that right again, volume equals 75x, minus x cubed on 2, okay, equals 75 times 5 minus 5 cubed over 2, and I'll get my calculator out, okay, 75 times 5 minus 5 to the power of 3 equals, divide by 2 equals, so it answers 125, meters cubed. Okay, so I found the maximum volume. I proved it was a maximum volume when I did the second derivative test. Check the question if I've done anything else. Okay, hence determine its maximum volume. If the maximum side length is 4, okay, if part D, if the maximum side length of the square base is 4, what's the maximum volume possible? Well, I think I'll just have to put 4 in. So in that last part, I don't not too sure why we want to do that, but anyway, if the length was 4, um, then the volume would be 75 times 4, minus 4 cubed on 2, so 100 minus 64 on 2, uh, 36, so that's 16. Okay, well no, 75, not, okay, 75 times 4, 300. 300 minus 64 equals 236, so it's 108. Okay, so don't get, you don't, that's the maximum volume possible, but that's not the maximum volume, because that happens when x equals 5. Okay, and we've answered the question. Okay, so copy and come across when you're ready. Okay, so let's just remember what the steps are. Look at what you have to maximise or minimise, and you have to have a formula. If you don't have a formula, then you can't progress. Once you've got the formula, you find the derivative, you make the derivative equal to zero. Um, you must test that it's a maximum or a minimum. You've got to test, okay? And then make sure at the end you answer the question, okay? So that's the final part, and the exercise you have to do is 20F, okay? And that's it.